All the teachers were outside welcoming the students for the first day of school. As I entered the building I could hear music playing. At first I thought it was from the hall speakers. But it sounded like it was coming from one of the classrooms. I stood with my back against the wall and closed my eyes. It was beautiful. Could this really be a student? Someone bumped into me and I opened my eyes to see who. A girl with an instrument case apologized and rushed off towards the music. I had to know, so I moved from the wall to catch up to her. Where are you going? Class is this way. I want to see something. The bell's about to ring. I know but. The music stopped. But what? Nothing let's go. Why did they stop? I wanted to hear more. Then I remembered the girl with the case. You okay? She must have interrupted them. Shoyo. Why would she do that? Couldn't she just let them play until the bell rang? What did she want that was so important? What's wrong? You seem irritated all of a sudden. I pressed my lips together and took a deep breath. I'm fine. You sure? I've never seen you get upset for no reason. I'm sure. First and second period went by okay. All the usual talk about what we would be learning this year. No actual teaching for the first day of classes. Then third period came. See you at lunch? Yeah. Let's meet at my locker it's closest. Okay. I opened the door to my literature class and stopped. At first I thought I was imagining it. After all I had been thinking about it since this morning but no it was the same song from before. This time it was quieter. Like someone was listening to it. I looked around the room but I didn't see anyone with headphones. Then I saw him. He was talking to a guy with green hair. They seemed to be listening to it from a phone. There was this feeling in my chest. I had a strong urge to be near him. I started across the room towards him. The bell sounded and the guy with the green hair looked up. He said something and the music stopped. My classmates all sat down and the teacher gathered everyone's attention. Somehow my butt found a seat. I have no idea what the teacher said. All I could focus on was the boy with the golden hair. He didn't seem to notice I was looking at him. Most people can feel when someone is staring at them. I finally looked away when the guy next to me nudged my arm. The teacher's talking to you. Yes, I was asking everyone if they had any questions. Oh, no I understand. Great let's move on. I turned back to look at him. His fingers were tapping on his lap. Almost like he was typing. He seemed to be typing the same thing over and over again. He would hold certain keys longer than other ones. Then it hit me. I waited for him to start over. Then I played the song from earlier in my head. It was him. He wasn't typing. He was playing notes on a piano. I watched his fingers and listened to them play the song over and over in my head. The bell for end of period sounded and he got up to leave. I tried to make my way over to him but the teacher called for me. Sir? You didn't seem focused today. I know you're new so I just wanted to check in. Everything's going okay so far. I'm glad to hear it. Next class I'll need you to focus though okay? Yes. You can go but if you need to talk I'm here to help. Right. Thanks. There's no way I'll catch up to him now. Plus I'm supposed to meet Kags at my locker. You okay? Did you get lost? No. I was talking to the teacher. Anyway ready for lunch? Yeah. We headed for the cafeteria. I looked for him but he wasn't there. What class do you have next? Art. You? Chemistry. Lunch is over and just as I'm dumping my tray. I get this tingling feeling in my chest. I look up and he's coming through the doors that lead to the tables outside. So that's why. Why what? Kags who's that? He followed my gaze. You mean the tall one? Yeah. Tsukishima. As if he'd heard his name he looked up. He looked around the room then shrugged and continued his conversation as they went through the doors and into the hallway. I felt that same urge to be near him. Me and Kags talked on our way to our next class. We split up at the stairs. I continued walking to the art wing. Okay everyone pick a seat. I looked around for an empty seat and saw one next to a girl with a case sitting on the floor beside her feet. I claimed it before anyone else could. Hey. Hi. She looked up from her sketchbook. Wait you're that guy I bumped into in the halls. Sorry again. It's okay. So where were you going in such a hurry? We chatted a little more. Then the teacher told us she wanted us to sketch the first thing that came to our head. I failed my attempt to draw a piano with notes coming from it. The teacher walked around looking at everyone's work. That's when I noticed the boy with the green hair. She was taking a long time watching him draw. She smiled and moved on. I leaned over to get a better look at his sketch pad. It was an amazing drawing of the art room. He had signed his name in the corner. Yamaguchi. Then it started. The music. I looked around the room to make sure I wasn't the only one listening. 
I wasn't. The class listened for a few then turned back to their work. Yamaguchi was smiling to himself. I turned back to my drawing and watched the wavy lines and music notes dance to the rhythm of the melody. My private concert was interrupted by a hand on my shoulder. The teacher was looking over me at my drawing. Good job. She smiled. Then she moved on to the girl beside me. I spent the rest of class listening to him play. I met Kags by the gym doors after class. You're late. Why is gym a requirement? I turned to see him walking into the locker room with Yamaguchi. Show. We need to go. I let his voice play in my head during practice. Much to the annoyance of Kags. We had been partnered up during a summer training camp. When he found out I was coming to this school he invited me to hang out with him and some of the other guys on the team that weren't participating in the training camp. The team welcomed me and we all became close. We even practiced at the rec center. They taught me the plays we'd be using once the season started. After practice I headed to the cafe to start my shift. How was practice? Mom greeted me when I entered the kitchen. She was rolling dough. I walked over and kissed her on the cheek. It was okay. What do you need me to do? You can help me after you wash up. Okay. After washing my hands and putting on an apron I walked over to the prep table. Tell me about your day. We talked and prepped for the next shift. I let the hot water run down my sore muscles. Then got ready for bed. You took forever in the shower. There are other people who live here. My sister stood in the doorway with her arms crossed. I met a boy. This changed her whole mood. Tell me everything. She listened intently. So, what now? Not sure. I need to focus on that scrimmage we have coming up but I still want to at least introduce myself. Why don't you ask his friend? I thought of that but I don't want him to think I'm just using him to get to Tsukishima. I didn't think of that. Bed. Mom came into the room. Natsu jumped off the bed and kissed mom on her way out. Show. You know how I feel about you dating. It's dangerous. I know but why should I have to suffer because of people's indifference and ignorance? You shouldn't but that doesn't change the facts. I know. Just be careful and listen to your instincts. If you ever feel like you might be in danger remove yourself from the situation as fast as you can. And don't let your stubbornness outweigh logic. Okay, you should stand for what you believe in but don't let it get you hurt. I won't. Promise me Shoyo. I promise. Okay, good night. Night. Over the next two weeks my schedule was the same, school, practice, and work. I'm not saying that in a bad way. School was going well. Practice was always fun. Work was tiring but I liked getting to meet new people. Plus thanks to a delivery. I found out where Tsukishima lived. That sounds creepy but I swear I wasn't stalking him. I was delivering a cake a few blocks from the cafe when I saw Yamaguchi leaving a house. He was waving goodbye. I checked the address for the delivery and it took me down the street towards him. Unfortunately I missed the light and he was already gone. I kept going and when I passed the house I glanced at the name plate. Tsukishima. A smile came on my face and it stayed the rest of the way to the delivery and back. During that second week, in literature, we were assigned a short story to read and analyze. We had to be ready to discuss it in class. Then write an essay on our interpretation of the text. As I listened to my other classmates give their opinions on the text. I couldn't help but notice none of them had picked up on the change in the point of view in the story. Actually, I disagree. Can you tell us why? Sure. I think some of us are missing the point. How so? Well it seems most people are reading it objectively when it should be read as a narrative. And before anyone bites my head off. I'm not saying anyone is wrong. I'm simply stating that there is another way to consider what's being told to us. Yeah and what way is that? My chest tingled at the sound of his voice. It was the first time I'd ever heard him talk in class. In fact, he along with the rest of the class, seemed surprised to hear him speak out. Well, the author starts off objectively speaking but turns it into a narrative part way through. Care to explain? I don't mind at all. My heart was beating way too fast. He was actually looking at me. More than that he was talking to me. Well notice how at first author uses the pronouns, we, they, him, but after he says, close your eyes and open mine, view as I do, and see as I see, from then on the pronouns change to, I, and me, effectively changing the text to a narrative. I could see the realization of my point cross his face. I couldn't help but smirk knowing I finally had his attention. That's a very astute observation. I look forward to your essay. Thanks. The teacher continued on with the lesson. Yamaguchi leaned over and whispered something to him. 
He turned back around but I could tell he was irritated. Based on the text, what would you think of the decisions the protagonist makes? Yamaguchi, the teacher looked at him. Well, he seems to make rash decisions. He takes unnecessary risks. Sometimes they pay off but more often than not. They don't. Okay, if you had to compare it to something what would that be? I'm not sure. Hmm, I wonder if he's irritated enough to respond if I speak up again. Okay, anyone else want to jump in? I will. Of course you will. Hook, line, and sinker. If you would prefer to go, please do so. Tsukishima? I'd say checkers. Like Yamaguchi said he moves without thought. Almost no strategy. He moves forward on the board only wanting to become a king instead of trying to win. Well, okay I'll give it to him. He's quite clever. Now I just need to keep him talking. I have his undivided attention and I want to keep it. I believe he's playing chess not checkers. Would you explain? Of course. I can understand why his moves look scattered around with no rhyme or reason. We are on the outside looking in. We know the outcome. He doesn't. Cue the eye roll. If you look at things from his point of view. His decisions aren't rash. Sticking to the chess analogy. Instead of blindly charging ahead or moving without thought. He tests the waters by sending out his pawns. He isn't trying to become a king. Instead he's trying to capture him. I wonder what his eyes look like up close. How many tests does he need to do? He's just dragging everything out. No matter he decides he'll still lose. Again we know that but he doesn't. Yamaguchi said it himself. Sometimes his risk pay off. Meaning he was able to use a pawn to take a knight. Now he knows making that decision or move can help him move forward. Your comparison is based in an objective view. Remember he wants us to see as he sees. While I'm loving the debate. I think we should leave the rest to your essays. The bell's about to ring anyway. You can start getting your things together. That was fun. A verbal sparring match. I followed them out into the halls. The sound of his voice. As annoyed as it was. Was music to my ears. Seriously though. Who is he? Hanata Shoyo. We had just passed through the doors to the outside eating area. He stopped walking and turned to look at me. They're Hazel. Tsukishima right? Nice to meet you. I stuck my hand out. I knew it was a long shot but I've come this far. At this point. I'll take any chance to hold his hand. Nice isn't the word I'd use. He looked down at my hand. The pure feeling of annoyance emanated from him. You'd think I'd be insulted. Ouch. You always this friendly? Are you always this obnoxious? His voice sent chills through every nerve ending. Not usually. Um. Hi. I'm Yamaguchi. Hi. You're in my art class right? Yep. I wanted to keep talking to them but I knew Kags was waiting for me. Cool. Well. I'm starving. See ya. I turned to go back inside. You good? Yeah. Let's get our food. Why were you talking to those guys? I told you. I like Tsukishima. You don't even know him. Which is why I was talking to him. He finally noticed me in class today. Kags pressed his lips together. Whatever it is. Just tell me already. Nothing. Kags. We had reached the table and were unwrapping our food. I just don't like that guy. Why not? He's always been stuck up. Only talking to his friend. Yamaguchi. Yeah. Listen. I'm not the type of person that just because my friends don't like someone that means I can't like them. I'm not saying that. Good. Because I like him and I plan to get to know him better. Whatever. Do what you want. Don't get all pouty. I'm not. He let out a frustrated sigh. Just be careful. Yes mom. Ha ha very funny. I know right. Did you finish your art project yet? Nope. Not even close. Can't you ask your teacher for more details or something? I could but. But what? I'll be right back. I went back outside to find them. Since there were more people outside than before. It was harder to spot them. There you are. They were sitting at a table a little farther away than the other ones. You have got to be kidding me. As much as I wanted to talk to him I really do need help with this project. So. I was wondering if you would like to be my partner. No. I don't. That's good since I was talking to Yamaguchi. I hope that didn't sound too rude. You mean the art project? She didn't say we were partnering up. I know but since you are without a doubt the best artist in the class. I was hoping you could help me. Help you how? Just give me tips. I'm totally lost when it comes to art. And here I was thinking you knew everything. Not by a long shot. Especially when it comes to you. I want to know everything. So. You think you can help out? He hesitated a bit. If it's a conflict of interest. Then I'll understand. He looked between us. Guess that's my answer. Welp see you around. 
Oh, and for the record, I turned to him. I don't know everything. I only know a lot about a little bit of things. I couldn't help but smirk again. He was so cute. I went back inside. Well, how'd it go? Not so bad, but I think I'll have a better chance if I ask when Tsukishima isn't around. I told you, Kags. He rolled his eyes. I seriously don't see why you find him so interesting. I just shrugged and reveled in the fact that things were finally moving along after two weeks of missed opportunities to talk to him. On our way to the art wing, we ran into some of our teammates. There's a new movie playing at the theater. We should go. My chest started to tingle. I looked down the hall and there he was rounding the corner with Yamaguchi. Shoyo, you in? My pulse quickened as they got closer. That sounds like fun. How about we head over after practice? I could feel them watching me confused. Oh, here comes your new boyfriend. Someone sounds super jealous. I gotta agree with my bro on this one. Kagayama you good? I'm fine, he walked off in a huff. He's not bad, they were looking at Tsukishima. I concur. Concur? He snickered. Yeah, it's my word of the day. I'll catch up with you guys later. I feel like we're being dismissed. I concur. Haha <laughs> dude stop. I can't take you seriously. They started down the hall mocking each other. We meet again, unfortunately, so stubborn, as friendly as ever I see. When I smirked at his annoyance he excused himself and continued down the hall. See you later, you are the first person to actually enjoy going back and forth with him. I shrugged my shoulder, what can I say, it's fun, he laughed and shook his head. So about the project? I asked once we had entered the classroom. I'll help you, really? If it means I get to see you annoy Suki. Yes, Suki? That's so cute. So, what exactly can I help you with? He spent the whole class teaching me the correct way to hold my pencil depending on if I was drawing or shading. And how to use the eraser to create shadows. I never really thought of drawing as an actual skill. I have a whole new respect for artists especially the one sitting right next to me. You're really good at art. Thanks. My mom's a painter. She taught me all this when I was young. That's so cool. Yeah, I guess. He blushed a little. So what's next? How about we find something in here for you to draw? Okay. We looked around the room. Perfect. He grabbed a blue bowl someone had painted. A bowl? Yep. I shrugged. He was the expert. All right everyone. Time to clean up. I had just finished my drawing. I turned to Yamaguchi to show him. Do you wanna see? He was staring at his paper. I looked over at it. That's incredible. He jumped a little. Sorry. It's fine. I was just considering if I should color it or not. I looked at it again and tried to picture it with color. I think it would be really pretty with colors but. I kind of like it like this. Me too. May I? The teacher was holding her hand out to see. He handed it over to her and they started talking. I left them to it and began cleaning up my area. Need help? It was my turn to jump. I had been listening to my new favorite song. I wish I could see him play. Sorry. That's okay. He gathered up some papers. Then I remembered something. Hey, you think I can walk to gym with you guys today? If Suki lets you. Sure. Okay. I knew Yamaguchi always went to meet Tsukishima before gym. This was my chance to talk to him alone. Be right back. I rushed out the room and down the hall. The sound of music leading my way. With my chest tingling I listened to the familiar notes being played. As much as I could stand there listening to him play forever I knew Yamaguchi was on his way and I didn't want to miss another chance. I slid the door open as quietly as I could and stepped into the room. His eyes were closed as his fingers moved along the keys. That longing to be near him overtook me and I took a couple steps toward him. You're a bit early aren't you? I usually have about five more minutes of playing before you drag me off to the gym. The sudden sound of his voice stopped me dead in my tracks. What are you doing here? I wasn't completely out of the trance his playing always put me in. Where's Yams? He seemed genuinely confused. The haze finally cleared and I realized he had been talking to me. He stayed behind to help the teacher clean the brushes. He wanted me to tell you not to wait for him. That was a lie, but my brain was still catching up. Okay, thanks. My heart was beating out of my chest and the tingling wasn't helping. Did you need something else? No, actually yes. Kind of. Kind of what? It's not that I need anything. I just wanted to walk with you. I prepared myself for rejection but it didn't come. He closed the door behind us. We chatted a bit as we walked down the hall. I resisted every urge in my body to reach out and grab his hand. Why me? Why not you? I'm serious. I can see that. He let out an exasperated sigh. 
I could tell our back and forth had took a more serious turn. So I decided to give him a straight answer. When I walked into class that first day, there was a room full of people, but I only saw you. The way he was looking at me said that he knew I was just as serious as his question. Yamaguchi had finally caught up to us just as we made it to the locker rooms. Show, coach is looking for you. That's my cue. Make sure you come early so you can get a good spot. Spot for what? To watch me play. The scrimmage match against our rival Nakoma. Is later today. I don't remember agreeing to come. Really? I do. Show. Let's go. You didn't need to be so rude. I know coach isn't looking for me. He was quiet then. Look. I already told you. I like him. Whatever issue you have with him isn't going to stop me from pursuing him. He pressed his lips together and I shook my head. I'm going to let you cool off. I jogged ahead to the club room. By the time we had changed and started practice, Kag seemed to have calmed himself down. After practice we met about the game plan for our match. Coach let us rest a little after the meeting. I texted my sister to make sure she was still coming. She had asked to come watch me since she wasn't helping in the cafe tonight. I told her she could only come if she came with her friends. It was going to be a little dark by the time the game started. She responded with a bunch of emojis. I reminded her to be careful and to cheer loudly so I knew she was there since I wouldn't have my phone once the match started. She took what I said seriously. I could hear her and her friends yelling my name as soon as we entered the gym. Looks. Or should I say sounds like your sister's here. The rest of the team laughed and I elbowed him in the side. I followed her voice and waved to her once I spotted them. Then my chest started to tingle and I knew he was here.